welcome to the 101st annual meeting. My name is Ann Mason. I'm the executive director of the Plymouth Antiquarian Society. Thank you so much for joining us on the Saturday afternoon. We do have um, uh, about 100 people who've pre-registered for this event, so we're just giving them some time to join us. So far, we have over 60 participants in the meeting. We do have a quorum of Antiquarian Society members, so we need a quorum of 35, and we already have over 35 members who are here in the webinar. It is 4.05 p.m., and I think it is time to get started. So, Madam President, I will turn it over to you for the meeting. Well, welcome to the 101st Annual Meeting of the Plymouth Antiquarian Society. I'm Virginia Davis, and it is my privilege to serve as the Society's President. For the first time in our organization's history, we are conducting this meeting virtually due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We are so thankful that so many of you could join us this afternoon from your homes in Plymouth and beyond. Before we turn to our business, today's business, I would like to take a moment to honor the memory of Monica Donlan, who passed away on September 22nd, 2020. Since 1919, the antiquarians have worked to inspire and engage Plymouth, the Plymouth community by preserving and sharing local history. Monica's dedication to this mission was unwavering. She became a life member of the society in 1987 and served in many roles over the year, including trustee. Monica was a warm, caring, and joyful person who generously shared her talents and her time with us and with many other societies. It was my pleasure to work with Monica at the Hollow House every summer where she volunteered faithfully as a spinner and an educator. She will be deeply missed. And please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. And now we will return to our today's business. So I will call on Susan Fesseton, who is nominating committee chair, and she will present the nominees to the Board of Trustees. Susan. The following nominees have been presented to the membership in writing for election to the Board of Trustees for the Plymouth Antiquarian Society for the Office of First Vice President, term 2021, Andrea Daly, for the Office of Second Vice President, term 2021, David Calori, for the Office of Treasurer, term 2022, Charles Votran III. For trustee, term 2021, Eileen Gellerani. For trustee, term 2023, Susan Fessenden and Martha Sulia. Thank you, Susan. May I have a motion to accept the slate of nominees as presented? Just as a reminder, you can put your motion in the chat box so you can type in and we do have um, Paula Fisher has made the motion to accept the slate of nominees. Um, may I have a second? When, uh, well, we actually had quite a number of seconds, but I will document the first second that was received was from Elizabeth Riley. Thank you. Is there any discussion? If there is no discussion, uh, we will now start the poll so that members of the Antiquarian Society can vote in response to the motion to accept the slate of nominees to the Board of Trustees. You should see the poll on your screen and you can select yes, no, or abstain. If you are not a member, please do not submit a response. We will verify the results of the election when the poll is completed. 
And I would just add, I know some of you may have two Antiquarian Society members using the same device to watch this meeting. So if you do have a second member with you, you would reply to the second question to submit your vote. If you are the only Antiquarian Society member using your device to watch the Zoom meeting, you don't need to uh, cast your vote for on the second question. You would need to select not applicable since it's not applicable for you to vote twice. And if you have any questions, please do put them in the chat feature and I'll respond. All right, I'm going to now end the poll. We seem to have stopped receiving votes. And I will share the results of the poll so that we can see how the Antiquarian Society members have voted mm -hmm. on this question. And we can see that um, the majority of the Antiquarian Society members did vote yes to approve the motion to accept the slate of nominees to the Board of Trustees as presented. And we will um, go back and run a, a report on this poll to see who voted and verify the results after the meeting. But I do see that we do have a clear majority um, who approved the motion and the slate of nominees to the Board of Trustees. Thank you. And now we'll go on with the presentation of nominees to the nominating committee for 2021. The following nominees have been presented to the membership in writing for election to the nominating committee for 2021. Susan Fesseden, Chair, Kate Angley, Cynthia Fisher, Ruth Fry, and Christine Sampson. May I have a motion to accept the slate of nominees as presented? You have a motion, Ginny, from David Calori. Thank you. May I have a second? And you have a second from Stephanie Cody. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? We will now stop the poll so that members of the Antiquarian Society can vote in response to the motion to accept the slate of nominees to the nominating committee for 2021. You should see the poll on your screen and you can select yes, no, or abstain. And if you are not a member, please do not submit a response. We will verify the results of the election when the poll is completed. All right, and I think again, we've reached an end of the voting period. So I will end the poll and share the results. So once again, we do have a majority of Antiquarian Society members voting in favor of approving the motion to accept the slate of nominees to the nominating committee for 2021 as presented. Thank you. This concludes our annual election. And now I will call on uh, Charles Votrain III, our treasurer, for his remarks. Charlie? Yep. Good evening, everybody. And welcome to our annual meeting. And I hope that you are all doing well in these tough times with COVID and everything. Um, the Antiquarian Society's fiscal year 2020 began on October 1st, 2019 and ended on September 30th, 2020. Last fall, we were anticipating a very busy season commemorating the 400th anniversary of the Mayflower Landing. The Board of Trustees approved an operating budget of $209,400. We plan to extend the open hours of our three historic house museums and consequently needed to increase our payroll budget line to support more docents. Following the shutdown in March, the board reduced the budget to $154,975. We were prepared for a drastic loss of revenue from in admissions, in-person programs, special events, and corporate sponsorships. We were not sure how we would survive without our annual fundraisers including the summer fair, and felt that tightening our belt was the wisest course of action. Although our annual financial review has not yet been completed by our accountant, I'm happy to report that we finished the fiscal year with a surplus budget. This is largely due to the incredible generosity of the society's members and supporters, annual appeal, virtual pilgrim breakfast, and other unanticipated contributions totaled $38,872.
exceeding all of our expectations. We are now able to re reinvest our surplus into our mission of preserving and sharing local history, tackling projects that had to be postponed due to the pandemic. Although there are still certain uncertainties ahead, we are in a strong position to begin 2021. Thank you for securing our missions. Thank you, Charlie. You're welcome. I am grateful for the continuing support of our members and friends during this challenging year. As Charlie's report highlighted, your generosity in 2020 built a strong foundation for facing the uncertainties of 2021. During these unprecedented times, PAS appreciates you, our valued members, more than ever. You make it possible for us to continue our mission of preserving and sharing local history. I would also like to extend the Society's thanks to the Mass Humanities and the National Endowment for the Humanities for the $2,500 CARES Act grant we received in June to support our operating budget during this challenging year. Funding from the Mass Humanities was provided through the National Endowment for the Humanities as part of the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act of 2020. We were one of the 123 humanities organizations across Massachusetts supported by this grant program. 2020 has shown us that during this, that these times of uncertainty and anxiety, cultural institutions help us to cope with the cacophony of noise that threatens to overwhelm us. They allow us moments of relief and joy when normal life feels out of reach. As we all know, in March, the corona pandemic turned the world on its head. Although we had to cancel most of our in-person events and postpone the opening of historic houses, I am proud of how we persevered to reach our members and the community. We did not give up on our mission, but worked hard to engage, educate, and entertain. Virtual events like our online Pilgrim Breakfast reached an audience of thousands across the country. Even though we could not gather together physically, we created new ways to build connections with each other and the past. We also focused our attention on caring for our historic properties. The long awaited improvements to the front lawn of the Hedge House are nearing completion. In spite of delays due to the pandemic, and unanticipated construction challenges, we are pleased to provide our flagship property with the proper setting it deserves. The new fence, the plantings, electrical service and irrigation system will make the Hedge House the premier waterfront event venue. Our executive director and the preservation committee did a wonderful job keeping the project moving forward. I can't wait for you to see it in person. I owe a special thanks to our executive director, Dr. Ann Mason, for her unwavering leadership. To the board of trustees who have supported me with their collective wisdom and made the transition to virtual meetings possible. And to our volunteers and docents for their flexibility, creativity, and dedication. In closing, I am grateful for the privilege to serve you as president of the Plymouth Antiquarian Society, and I look forward to working with you for another year. Now, with great pleasure, I invite our executive director, Dr. Ann Mason, to share the many accomplishments of the society during this unprecedented year. Dr. Mason. Thank you so much, Jenny, for that introduction. And I have to say that my, my comments really are all um, connected to just, just I, I'm just overflowing with thanks this year. As, as in every year, I think we have so much to be thankful for. 
Charlie mentioned in his remarks that we have been overwhelmed with the, the generosity of our members and our community. And we just uh, live in such a wonderful time where we feel very supported in spite of all of the challenges of this year. And I think 2020 has certainly stretched us, um, but I, I really do believe that we are a stronger organization this year than we were even last year. And that may seem strange because we haven't been able to meet in person. We haven't been able to open our historic houses to the public as much as we had hoped. Um, but really we've been stretched. We've been um, forced to become more creative, to learn new skills. And I think we have been become refocused on our mission of preserving and sharing local history. And so I do want to thank um, Ginny as president and the other board members for their leadership during this time. I don't think we ever had a moment where we just said, let's throw in the towel and walk away. We were all uh, united in our desire to make sure that the Antiquarian Society came through 2020 and that we didn't lose sight of our mission as we went through this really unprecedented time. And I also want to thank our committee members. Sometimes their work goes unnoticed because it happens behind the scenes, but we have many members who are dedicated to, again, continuing that mission in different ways. So our preservation committee has been meeting regularly, our collections committee, we have a sponsorship committee and an education committee. We have a group of members who is working on uh, revising our code of ethics, which is an important institutional document. And we have had to be flexible and meet um, via Zoom. We've had to meet with masks on outside. But while we do that, we are really, really working very well together. And I thank all of them for, for putting in the hours and being willing to give up their time and to dedicate their, their experience and their bright ideas um, to help the Antiquarian Society grow stronger. And I also want to thank Bob Hoxie, our horticulturist, who's been working um, throughout this year on our historic properties, and um, to thank our garden volunteers. So many volunteer opportunities this year had to be put on hold because of the pandemic, but our garden volunteers worked very faithfully. They were um, very flexible and willing to adapt to new procedures, um, but Nancy Humphrey and Christine Sampson at the Harlow House, um, and then Harold and Marilyn Taylor. Taylor at the Spooner House continued to work and make sure that our gardens were, um, were cared for. I also want to thank our staff. So again, we haven't seen as much of them as we would like this year because we haven't been having in-person events um, and we haven't had our houses open, but our docents have been working behind the scenes. They've been helping with different projects, um, working side by side with me. And certainly it's through their efforts that we were able to reopen the Hedge House in September. And we did um, welcome a number of visitors, mostly local visitors in September and October. And in fact, one visitor to the Hedge House said it was better than the Newport Manson mansion that she had just visited. Um, and I, I, I never get tired of sharing that story because I think it's just exactly what we like to hear. We have such a wonderful historic site and we want people to see it. So we're looking forward to next year when our docents will be working double time, um, hopefully to be able to showcase these three historic houses. And I also want to thank Di Hoxie, who is our graphic designer, and Natalie Shaw, who is our bookkeeper. And again, they often work behind the scenes. You don't see them. Um, recently, I haven't even been able to see them, um, but they are helping to keep the organization moving forward. I want to thank our sponsors. Um, as uh, Ginny noted, we did receive a CARES Act grant from Mass Humanities and the National Endowment for the Humanities. We also had um, uh, John Reynolds and the King Associates who joined as our first corporate sponsors this year. Um, we, we are relaunching our sponsorship campaign um, this coming year for 2021. So stay tuned for more details on that. But we are very thankful for the support of sponsors. And again, to reiterate what Charlie said, we're so thankful for the support of members and friends who gave sometimes incredibly unexpected gifts um, and who, who especially supported our virtual Pilgrim Breakfast campaign, which was very much appreciated. 
And speaking of the virtual Pilgrim Breakfast, I wanted to pull up this side just to highlight the many talented individuals who participated in that um, virtual program. We were so disappointed not to be able to hold the breakfast at the Harlow House as we have for so many years, since 1933, but we kept the tradition alive. We were able to bring music and song and history um, to members locally, as well as to people from across the country who tuned in or watched the video later. And we're so thankful um, for the individuals who made that possible. We're also thankful for being able to continue our Burial Hill tour series with Pilgrim Hall Museum. We've been doing those the first Saturday of every month. And since April, we've been doing all sorts of different virtual formats. So um, again, we were tested to be flexible, to be creative, to learn new skills. And um, I'm so thankful that we've been able to connect with many of you and with other members and friends, again, really from across the country. I think one thing that we've learned during the pandemic is that there are certainly new ways that we can connect and engage our community. And we will continue to do that um, even when we can, once again, happily resume in-person gatherings. Another highlight of this year was the launch of our Plymouth History Explorers program. And again, I've listed the um, members who've been instrumental in organizing this program and making it possible. This was, um, this was a way for us to, uh, to, to, again, pivot. And instead of doing an in-person educational program, last year we did a, a week-long educational program for eight to 12-year-olds. And this year we said, well, we can't gather in person, but we want to make sure we're still sharing educational materials, still reaching the community. And so what we did instead was create take-home kits so that families in Plymouth and in surrounding communities could pick up these kits and could have hands-on activities that they could do at home. This was done um, completely free. We did not charge um, for these kits. And we had the wonderful, talented volunteers who, um, again, gave of their time to produce videos and other content so that uh, we had uh, instructional materials for the children to follow along as they did these hands-on activities. And here on this slide, I'm uh, thankful for the Nolan family who gave me permission to share some of the photographs from their experience with the Plymouth History Explorers. Um, you see them um, here at the Hedge House in the Rose Briggs Garden on our, our downtown scavenger hunt. And then another photo of them at Sacrifice Rock on our um, road trip around Plymouth to different historic sites. And then on the right side, you can see Dash who's learning how to use a lucid fork. Um, so that was one of our first activities for Plymouth History Explorers. So we have big plans for expanding this program throughout the year for continuing to engage with these young history lovers. And we just hope that they will continue to um, just be fascinated by the past and to engage with the past um, with the Antiquarian Society. As Ginny mentioned, we um, did do a lot of work this year at the Hedge House on our new frontage project, but I also wanted to highlight another project that we um, just recently completed. So we're very thankful that we were able to clean the facade of the Spooner House on North Street. Um, unfortunately, over the years, just about 10 years, um, the paint had begun to have some issues and we were having a lot of mold and mildew growth on the exterior. And so we, we wanted to make sure that we cleaned it and repainted it. Um, because this is, as many of you may remember, when the house was restored um, quite a while ago. Um, but these are some very, very old shingles that you see on the North Street facade. And we, you know, dating to possibly the, the late 18th century or the early 19th century. Um, so we want to preserve them. And this fresh coat of paint will do that as well as giving the house a much needed um, brightening and facelift um, for, for visitors who come to see it. So I wanted to thank the 1772 Foundation who this year offered a matching grant program for preservation projects and Preservation Massachusetts who oversaw that grant program. And we were very fortunate to be awarded a matching grant for this project, um, which allowed us to, to fund it. So thank you to 1772 Foundation and Preservation Massachusetts. And again, I hope you all are able able to walk down North Street and see the Spooner House. And then, of course, next year when we reopen, actually get inside and relive that wonderful story. 
Um, we have been dedicating a lot of time, again, behind the scenes to making sure that if there is another shutdown, we are able to work remotely. Um, and one thing that we have done on the collection side is invest in what's called Past Perfect, which is a um, wonderful um, collections management tool. And so we are actually shifting from having a co computer-based um, to a program to actually having a cloud-based program so that we can access our collections catalogs anywhere. And this will allow the collections committee and will allow me um, to work from home and to um, continue to catalog and um, make sure that we know what's in our collection, make sure that we're caring for our collection. And with the ultimate goal of uh, just being able to share our collection with all of you. And we have started um, doing a lot of sharing through Facebook and through our website. Um, this year in particular, I've been doing a lot of research into Plymouth's experience with the women's suffrage movement and highlighting local suffragists like Zilpha Harlow Spooner, who didn't live in this Spooner house, but did live on North Street um, a couple houses down at number 35. Um, but feel free to visit our website um, where we do have those virtual resources so that you can learn a little bit more about um, different parts of Plymouth's past. And we'll continue, again, we'll continue with sharing in those, um, in those different ways as we go forward through this winter, but we are very much looking forward to having you join us in person. And one um, in-person opportunity is coming up actually uh, quite soon. So um, I know the holidays will look very different this year for all of us. And I'm very thankful that the Plymouth Chamber of Commerce has organized a hometown stroll, um, which will happen the second weekend of December, December 10th through 13th. And we are decorating the hedge house. So we want to show off our new fence. Um, we will be adding lights and greens. And when you come, hopefully you can come down to Water Street view the lights and as a special incentive on Saturday December 12th we'll be having a pop-up shop on the lawn so we have been very fortunate to have um, a number of items donated to us Christmas decorations um, Christmas gifts all sorts of unique gifts and stocking stuffers as well as some materials for wrapping those gifts so we will have those items for, for sale um, on the lawn on December 12th so be sure to look for um, news of that um, with all the details. And with that, I will turn it back to our president um, so that we can continue and get to our the main feature of the, the evening, our um, wonderful history presentation. Thank you, Anne. And thank you all for attending this afternoon's annual meeting. We want to move right on to our special history presentation. So may I have a motion to observe, adjourn the meeting? Yep, you have a motion from Charlie Votrain. All right, may I have a second? And you have a second from Elizabeth Riley. All right. Um, if you're a member of the Antiquarian Society, please use the poll to vote on the motion to adjourn. All right, and I think we've reached the, the number of members that we have present, how all submitted their vote. So I have ended the poll and I will share that. And we do have most people um, make, approving the motion to adjourn the 2020 annual meeting with it looks like two abstentions. Thank you. The 101st annual meeting of the Plymouth Antiquarian Society is officially concluded and it looks like 4.33 p.m.